How about this? A workaholic is a person who works compulsively. Coming up, we will talk more about workaholism and the effect that it has on you and your relationships. That's important. Yes, important it is. Stuff. It is a thing. A workaholic is a person who works compulsively. Now, if your job starts to affect your relationships or your overall health, it can cause a lot of problems. Joining us in studio to talk about workaholism and how to identify it is career and life happiness coach Dan Mason. Love the title, Dan, Life Happiness Coach. And don't we all want to be? That's what we're looking for, the balance, right? Yeah, right, exactly. So how do, how do we identify a workaholic? Well, the thing is, is workaholism is actually the best dressed addiction because most of us don't see it as a problem. We get lots of praise, there's lots of social rewards, and there's a lot of external financial rewards. The harder you work, the bigger the pay raise, the next promotion, you climb the ladder, which is great. I love working with high achievers, I love working with ambitious people, but really where we have to take a look is at what cost is the success happening, and how do you feel about it? You know, do you feel like you're able to get a good night's sleep? How's your physical health? How's your emotional well-being? And how are your relationships? Are you showing up at home is like the present parent and the partner that you want to be or are you just zoned out you know having a drink buried in your smartphone answering email so that's really the thing that we want to look at workaholism has nothing to do with the number of hours that you work it's really about how you attach to the work and what effects it's having on your life so if somebody if somebody's watching right now and they maybe they have a spouse who is, could be have the, the what we're talking about this workaholic thing is it how do you inter, how do you intervene how do you well, the real thing that you have to look at, there's a lot of surface level advice out there that people will say, well, you got to work smarter, not harder. If people knew how to do that, <laughs> they'd already be doing it. So one of the things I like to do with my clients is look at the internal underlying reasons that they're working. It's never really about corporate pressure as much as the pressure that you're creating within yourself. And one of the big things that I've noticed after doing thousands of client hours now is a lot of people use their relationship with work to meet unmet emotional needs from childhood. Mm. You know, they are looking to get praise and love. You grew up in a home where maybe the only way that you got the attention of your parents is when you were performing or doing well in school. So subconsciously, there becomes an association there that says love is conditional and I only get it when I'm working all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, for other people, they use work as a way to feel control if they grew up in a chaotic home growing up. So it gives them something to focus on to sort of zone out and avoid unpleasant emotions in their life. That's really the underlying thing that you want to start to explore with a, qual with a qualified coach, therapist, because once you know why you do the things you do and the underlying sort of neuroscience and psychological reasons, then you can start to create a path to create a path forward uh, to heal that part of yourself and build a healthy relationship at work where you've got balance at work and at home. Yeah, well, when we attach a holic to the end of anything, we're implying addiction. But in order to get help, somebody's got to want it. Yeah, and a lot and, of and they might even not not know it's affecting their relationships. No, they might not. But that's the thing is, and you can start to assess like, are you what's your you know if, for somebody who's in a marriage, are you still passionate and alive in the relationship, or are you living like roommates now? You know, yeah. are there, is the only connection when you're sitting on the couch, you know, buried in your laptop and Netflix is on in the background? Mm -hmm. So there are very real consequences that happen, and the problem is, is most of us look at workaholism as a positive force in in our life and it's not a bad thing I mean you look at somebody like Kobe Bryant I mean work ethic was legendary but what we're seeing is when he was home he was able to disconnect and he was fully present with his children and was able to focus and and be able to create the separation without the compulsion or feeling anxious or guilty for not working balance in yeah. all things right yeah that's absolutely. what it comes down to all right Dan Mason always great talking to you Dan oh good to be here Thanks. thank you so much appreciate it